In this video for programming three, I'm going to explain the hill climbing optimization algorithm and the hill climbing optimization project that you have. So I've got open right here the class folder for computer science three. Uh, this is the hill climbing op optimization folder. I open it up. I've got two files in here. I've got a readme and I've got some starter code and you should download both of these and I've already downloaded them. So I'm just going to start running them. If you need a reminder how to download this, uh, you can right click and then there's a download button right there. And then if you select it with a left click, I believe you go to these three dots, there's also a download button right there. Okay, so uh, first generally, what exactly is hill climbing? And I just Googled a uh, hill climbing algorithm and this was one of the first web pages to uh, pop up. So if you've taken calculus before, uh, you've seen things like global maximum, local maximum, um, some of these other terms maybe we didn't quite use. Um, but you're hopefully familiar with the idea of some sort of function. Could be a weird piecewise function, right? There's parts of this that don't look like they are uh, polynomials that are connected to the rest of the function. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to find either the maximum or the minimum state, the maximum or minimum value of the function. In this case, it seems to be that they're looking for the maximum value. And what our hill climber is going to do is it's going to start at some location. So current state is listed right here in this example. And it's going to try and climb uphill. So this one right here is going to climb up to the top of this hill and find this local maximum right here. Now, ideally, our algorithm would find the global maximum, and we're going to talk about some strategies for how it does this. Okay, so what exactly am I talking about? Well, let's look at the code, the example code, the starter code that you're going to use in your project to get kind of a clearer idea of what's happening. All right, so the starter code here says uh, function to maximize, and it gives you this function. It's got a list of weights, it does a bunch of math, it multiplies your total times a big number and returns it. There's no comments, what in the world is this thing doing? Okay, so it is doing what I said. It's, it's taking a list of numbers, it's doing some math on them and giving you some other number. This is a very abstract example. In the real world, what we would use this sort of thing for is to optimize something that we're interested in. Uh, so for example, if we had a lot of information about um, car sales and how the number of cup holders affects car sales and how the uh, shape of the frame or the acceleration and all these different features, how they affect how many people will buy a car um, and also the price, right? So all these things are tied together, right? A lot of uh, more features that you add might increase the price, might change the size of the car. Maybe you can't fit in certain features if you have other features. Um, but you can imagine like all these different attributes that a car has and they can all affect how many people are gonna buy the car in some way. And so we're gonna just assume that we've got data on how many people are gonna buy the car. And that's what, for example, these weights are. Right, so you look in here and I'm going to loop over my inputs and I'm going to take my total and I'm going to subtract my inputs uh, squared. I'm going to multiply some of my inputs times the other weights. I'm going to do some various different other operations here. So like if we just look at this part right here, we're multiplying a particular input times a particular weight and we have six. So maybe this is an attribute of a car that uh, contributes nicely to people buying the car. And maybe this one, this attribute, the second attribute doesn't contribute as much. And this one over here contributes a lot. So we have some data that helped us figure out what this function is. And again, this is just some made up stuff that I put together as an example, because I didn't find online some really good hill climbing optimization uh, projects. Although when we go back to the class folder, um, when we learn more about genetic algorithms, there's going to be a fun one where we're going to actually optimize uh, a game AI, and you can see sort of how it behaves in a game world. Um, so there's going to be some more interesting projects. This is just the starter one to give you a sense of what we're trying to do. All right, so if we go back to the code here, this is my function to maximize. This function has some sort of curve. It has some sort of shape. Now it's not going to be as simple as this because this is only two dimensions and mine actually has uh, one, two, three, four, however long this list is, oh, 10, right? It has 10 dimensions. 
So that's a lot more complicated. It's hard to visualize. We always look at these simple examples in two dimensions or maybe possibly even three, dimen or, yeah, three dimensions right here. This is the Wikipedia page on hill climbing. Um, and we'll get back to that in a second. But we always look at the simpler examples here. We're trying to write an algorithm that creates a list of numbers and it creates the best list of numbers. It creates the list of numbers that when we give it to this function gives us the biggest output. And that's hard. Um, you're not gonna be able to take derivatives of this, um, at least not easily. And you're not gonna be able to just guess what the answer is. I mean, maybe you can make an educated guess by reading this, but that's not really what I want you to do. I want your code to come up with the best solution to this question right here. So again, you're gonna create your own list of numbers. You are going to then uh, modify those numbers. So our hill climber has to take tiny little steps on the landscape. Um, when we get into genetic algorithms, we're going to call those mutations. I'm actually going to start calling them mutations now, just for simplicity. So suppose I have some list of inputs. I'm just going to use this because it's convenient. It's located right here. So I have my inputs, and I just made them these numbers. You could use random. You could import random. Uh, excuse me, that's not how you import random. And then you could generate some random numbers, random.randint. And you could say this is between 0 and 10. I don't know if between 0 and 10 is a good idea. I'm just saying this is an option that you have. All right, and then we want to mutate these in some way. Uh, and we want to compare. We are basically making a guess about what might be a good value to put into this function. And then we're going to modify it ever so slightly and see if our new value that we tried is better or worse. So for example, I might take my inputs and I'm going to take the fifth value and I'm going to set it equal to itself plus one. I'm just gonna add one to the fifth input. And what I'm gonna do is right here, I'm gonna pass inputs to this function. I'm gonna see what I get. And then I'm gonna modify it ever so slightly. And I'm gonna print it out again, and I'm gonna see if it's better or worse. So I'm just gonna run this and see what happens. All right, so the first time I got uh, 120, Let's see, what is this? Three zeros, three more zeros, 12 million. And the next time I got 8 million. Okay, so that was a bad change. I don't like that change. It turns out that I should not have added one to the fifth input. Maybe I should have subtracted one. We'll try that. Wait, what? Oh, the randomness is causing, uh, well, random things to happen. Let's get rid of that randomness temporarily and uh, Let's see if the one was actually a bad idea or not. Okay, it was a bad idea. So I had 26 million here and it took me down to 22 million. All right, so maybe I should subtract one. Let's try that out. All right, this improved it. So I went from 26 million to 28 million. Remember, I'm trying to get the highest value. Okay, so what I would do then is I would keep this new input. And if it was worse though, I would go back to the old one. Now you are supposed to write a program to, to um, automate, that's the word I'm looking for, to automate this process. All right, you want to write code that randomly picks one of the values, changes them slightly, and then compares the previous version to the new version to see which is better. If the previous version is better, you keep it. If the new version is better, you keep that one. So you've taken a tiny little minus one step on this landscape. Right? And again, this is just an example landscape, but the tiny minus one step might move us a little bit further up the hill. There might come a point where you can't move any higher, like any change you seem to make makes it so that things don't get better. In that case, you should save your current best value, perhaps this local maximum. You should re-randomize a set of inputs and you should run the process again and see if you can get better not only than this new randomized set of inputs by walking it slowly uphill, by changing these values ever so slightly and seeing if you made a positive change, but also comparing it to the best that you've seen so far. Because if your hill climber randomly happens to land over here, it might be able to climb up to a higher peak than it found on the first try. So again, you're going to write uh, probably a function that will give a slight change to whatever random inputs you decided on. 
and then you're going to compare and contrast automated you know use your if statements whether or not the change was beneficial if it was not keep the old one if it was keep the new one this is how we climb uphill okay the other thing sort of a extension of this project that you can do and i describe this in um, the readme that you can download is says consider changing the size of the mutation operator and or the number of mutations that occur per round as you progress. Okay, so what's that talking about? Um, what that means is, so typically with the hill climber, you make the smallest change you can, you see if it's better or worse, and then you try again. But you could make multiple different mutations um, before checking the new thing. So I could mutate a bunch of these and see if I make a big uh, gain, and that can make my algorithm uh, improve faster. I can also make bigger changes. I don't have to just subtract one. I could subtract 10 and see if that is a good change that I should do, all right? But the idea is that as you get closer and closer to the best value, excuse me, as you get closer and closer to the best value, you don't wanna make big changes, otherwise you might miss it. You might sort of leap over it, for example. And that's where this idea of simulated annealing comes in. All right, so I'm on the hill climbing Wikipedia page and simulated annealing. I'm going to describe what that is. So first of all, this comes from uh, annealing, which is a process that is done to strengthen metal. It's a um, gradual cooling process is what's happening. And well, this is that, but simulated. Okay, so this diagram right here, it's about to reset. So it's temperature zero. It starts off with a high temperature, 24, and it decreases over time. And this red line is actually where the hill climber is jumping around to and testing. Now when I say the hill climber, all I mean is a list of numbers, right? In our code here, we had our list of inputs. That is the hill climber that I'm talking about. So if I go back over here, what's happening is this variable that they call temperature, and that's just because it's related to annealing. It has nothing to do with actually like a, uh, a heat value. It's just a simulated temperature. This temperature is going to gradually decrease. And as it decreases, the magnitude of the mutations perhaps as well as the number of mutations, decreases. And what this lets the algorithm do is at first it makes big jumps and it sort of explores the landscape. And it only takes, now I know it's showing the red line like way over here. That's just where it's testing. It doesn't actually go to those values um, unless they're better than where it is currently. Um, but what it lets it do is it explores the landscape and finds sort of all kinds of different peaks and valleys. And once the temperature starts decreasing, it makes smaller movements. And hopefully it will make smaller movements and crawl up the actual best peak instead of, you know, these that are pretty good but suboptimal. Like this is the global maximum. That's what we want to find. You know, this is pretty good. It might be confusing to our algorithm. It might think that it's over here and not at the best value. So you should think about that. After you write your mutation, after you've run some tests and got some things working, see if slowly decreasing the magnitude and the amount of mutations per test of how good it does, per test of what the function to maximize gives you, you should decrease that at those over time. Okay, one last thing for the instructions is that it says you may only use 100,000 comparisons. So by comparisons, I mean calls to an if statement. So if you have an if statement in your code, suppose you only have one, and you may be able to do this with only one if statement, and you have a loop around that if statement. That means that loop can only loop 100,000 times. So it's kind of a competition. I mean, I'm not going to grade you based on the competition, but essentially you can check and see if your algorithm can find a better solution in 100,000 trials or comparisons compared to maybe your classmate's uh, algorithm that also only uses the same number of, of tests. All right, I think that's all I need to say. I will answer more questions in class or by email if you have.